Hello Year 4 and welcome to another online writing lesson and in today's lesson we are going to be editing and improving your hot task that you wrote yesterday. The success criteria, I can reread my hot task to check it makes sense, I can proofread my hot task and check for any spelling, punctuation and grammar mistakes, I can edit my work fixing any mistakes using a green pen. So, first of all, what does edit and improve mean? I want you to pause the video now and show me your best thinking poses. Think about this uh, question and what could the answer be? What does edit and improve mean? Pause the video now. Lovely, now that you've had some time to think about it, let's have a look at the definition together. So to edit your work means to fix any mistakes and to improve means to make it better. So editing means fixing, Improving means making something better. Now, why do we need to edit and improve our work? Once again, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video, but this time, once you thought of reasons why, I want you to talk to your pencil and tell your pencil or pen. Off you go, pause the video now. Brilliant, let's have a look at the answers. So here are just a few reasons why we edit and improve. It's a skill, so proofreading itself is a skill. It's one of your writing targets that you've got to achieve in year four. We also need to, as your teachers, assess whether you can do it well. And finally, it's something you'll need to do throughout your education and most likely even in your profession. So even me as a teacher, I'm constantly writing emails, I'm writing letters, uh, reports, all sorts of things, and I'm constantly needing to edit and improve my work once I've completed a first draft of it. Now, if you've edited and improved your work, but your writing still has spelling mistakes, incorrect grammar, so that's missing full stops, capital letters, commas or apostrophe, then you're not proofreading your work properly. And that's why today we're going to practice this skill and I'm going to model for you how you can proofread your work. So here is a short paragraph with errors and I want you to watch me proofread and edit and improve it. OK, so I've got my pen ready and I've got my green pen ready. So let's have a read through it. So I'm just going to read through that first paragraph there, or that first sentence it says Mike meet Mike TV the fourth lucky winner of a golden ticket. Mike was playing on his PlayStation when he saw the wrapper sticking out from the chocolate bar he had just bought. okay? So straight away from reading it, yes, I know that I've already pointed out the mistakes to you in red, but just from reading it straight away, just listening to the sentences, I can see here that I've got at least two sentences in my paragraph and straight away I could hear that one of the verb endings was incorrect the last word bide should be bought but I'll come back to that in a second so first of all let's start off with the first sentence meet Mike TV well Mike TV is it a proper noun it's the name of a person even though if it's a fictional person it's still the name of a person and that needs to have a capital letter so I'm going to cross out the small m and I'm going to write above it a capital M small t and I'm going to write above it a capital T. There we go. And the dash there, it, or, or it's parenthesis, we're adding a bit more information. So he's the fourth lucky winner of a golden ticket. So here, I can hear as well that, oh, I finished one sentence. I'm now about to make a new, or start a new sentence. So Mike was playing on his PlayStation. I can already, I'm taking a breath at this point. So that's giving me a clue that I need to have some sort of punctuation there and because this is my complete idea it's a full sentence I need to have closing punctuation so I'm either going to put a, a full stop or a exclamation mark so let's read the sentence again and we'll decide which one's best full stop or exclamation mark meet Mike TV the fourth lucky winner of a golden ticket now if you think I should put an exclamation mark can you raise one finger if you think I should put a full stop Raise two fingers. Off you go. Come on, don't be shy now. Let's see those fingers. Absolutely well done. I can see most people have got one finger up. So I would put an exclamation mark. And the reason why oops, I'll put an exclamation mark here is because he's the fourth lucky winner of a golden ticket. Yeah, it's an exclamation. It's something that's exciting. So it would end an exclamation mark. If you did put a full stop, it would be grammatically correct. However, it's better to use an exclamation mark here. 
Now that I've completed the first sentence, I'm now about to start my next sentence and I can see, of course, new sentence, capital letter. Mike here has got a capital letter, so it's fine. So Mike was playing on his PlayStation and PlayStation is capital P, capital S because it's the name of a brand and it's the, the name of the actual physical PlayStation. And there's no, some of you might think, oh, sir, there should be a space between play and station but i believe that when you actually have a look at playstation the what it's two words that are together that are joined like that if it's incorrect i'll you can possibly after with this video you can check quickly google is playstation written as two separate words or one word but i have a feeling it's written like that okay so mike was playing on his playstation when he saw the wrapper sticking out from the chocolate bar he had just bought. so chocolates Chocolate, because of course we're learning about Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, this is a common word and we should not be misspelling it. So, chocolate, chocolate, okay? It's missing here the O, so I'm just going to write it correctly. Chocolate. I'm trying to write it nice and neatly as well. So, that's chocolate barn, I'll just cross out that. Cool. And he had bide. Now, bide. Yes, it's got the ed ending, but that's not actually because by the past tense of it, because it's one of our irregular verbs, it doesn't just end in ed, it's actually bought. Okay, so I'm going to cross out by and it is bought. B O U G H T. Now, if you come across a verb and you are unsure what it is in the past tense, so even though the text is written in the present tense mainly you might have some past tense words like here if you are unsure what that verb ending is ask an adult at home especially if you've got like an older sibling who is in an older year group that they'll be able to help you or you can google it okay if you just write down the verb and then write past tense next to it it will tell you what the past tense version of the verb is if you still can't find it just message your teacher on seesaw and they can help you okay and we end that sentence with a full stop, that's fine. Good. Now let's have a look at the next sentence, okay? When asked about his discovery, Mike said he wasn't too bothered because he doesn't even like chocolate. His parents think Mike is a complicated boy who needs to get away from his PlayStation. Cool. So once again, I can hear that there are at least two sentences, two sentences, but there is some missing uh, punctuation and spelling mistakes. So when asked about his discovery, what do I need here? Can you all show me in three, two, one, show me? Well done, I can see everyone going like this, comma. Absolutely, so when asked about his discovery, comma. And the reason why I need a comma here is because this is my fronted adverbial of time. And the reason why I know it's time is because it says when, okay? So when asked about his discovery, comma, Mike said he wasn't too bothered and wasn't is correct because it is a contraction and you've, I've used here the apostrophe correctly. Too bothered, too bothered. We use T double O, not T just O. When you're saying something's like too much, too bothered, it's, um, uh, 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 it's, uh, it's when you're kind of, you're expanding it a little bit more. You're kind of, you're saying, oh, it's, I'm too tired today when you're really trying to stress something. So he wasn't too bothered because, now because that is a year two objective, you'll all, all know that, especially because I taught a lot of you when you're in year two. And because it's one of the year two spelling words, and we all know how to spell because, okay, we should not be making that silly mistake. It is B-E-C-A-U-S-E. Because he doesn't. Now, what is the problem with this word? What is missing? Shout it out. Apostrophe. Yeah, well done. And where should the apostrophe go? What two letters should it go? Shout it out again. Between the N and the T. Well done. I can hear it. Well done, guys. So it's between the N and the T. I need my apostrophe here because this is my apostrophe for not possession but contraction because I'm contracting it from does not to doesn't. Even like, because he doesn't even like chocolate. Of course, another silly mistake. We know how to spell chocolate. It's just there, but I'm going to write it out again. Chocolate. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm just writing it here for now. Hopefully, because you've written it in your books, you'll have space just above 
where you make the mistake to write it here just because I don't have space on the on the flip chart or on the PowerPoint to do so. Cool, full stop. So Mike said he wasn't too bothered because he doesn't even like chocolates. Full stop. His parents think Mike is a complicated boy. So it's interesting here. His parents, apostrophe S, does do or do, do we need to put an apostrophe S uh, or apostrophe between the T and the S in the word parents? Yes or no? Say yes or no. No. Why don't we need to have put an apostrophe? Why don't we need to put an apostrophe here? Okay, go and shout it out. I can hear a range of answers, okay. Uh, interesting. So some people said uh, you don't need to have the apostrophe there because it's not, because we only have an apostrophe for possession or for contraction. And of course his parents think, well, there's no possession there happening. Absolutely. It's not like, you know, um, Mr. Ibrahim's pen apostrophe s because the pen belongs to mr ibrahim so there's no possession happening there and there's no contraction it's not his parents it is or it's like it's it's just so there is no apostrophe there and this is a common mistake that a lot of children do especially when you start learning about apostrophes for contraction and possession you begin to write an apostrophe whenever you any word that ends with an s you always put apostrophe s don't do that only if it's for possession or for contraction okay so his parents think mike is and think you can see think present tense think mike is again present tense is a complicated boy who needs to get away from his playstation i agree with the parents good so you can see here i've done it together but also model for you how you are going to um, uh, edit and improve your work now it is over to you okay so what you need to do is that you need to get yourself a green pen your hot tasks and they are all written in your yellow uh, home leading home learning journals or books you need to make sure you're checking your sentences that they make sense so like I did and like I modeled for you begin by just reading a sentence at a time or maybe a paragraph at a time because sometimes when you just read it you begin to notice oh I forgot a full stop here oh uh, that spelling mistake isn't quite right oh it doesn't quite it doesn't sound right I put the wrong punctuation instead of a full stop here I should have a comma or instead of an exclamation mark I should have a full stop or a question mark, whatever okay so just begin by reading it to yourself slowly if you're at home and there's a lot of noise around you uh, the way that I teach my classes you do the cupping method you put your hands over your ears like this so you can just about just hear yourself saying it out loud and you read your uh, work and your sentences and your paragraphs out loud not too loud but loud enough so that you can hear it to yourself okay so read your task you're going to check your sentences make sure that they make sense check for any spelling mistakes and I've shown you already the most common one that's probably going to be made is, is chocolates because if you are unsure you uh, use a dictionary at home or you can use uh, Google as well to help you uh, for any spelling mistakes that you're unsure of uh, and finally, most importantly, you'll check your punctuation. So your capital letters, your full stops, commas after clauses, whether that's a fronted adverbial or an opener, a sentence opener, or if it's a clause in the middle of your sentence, okay, like embedded clauses, um, uh, apostrophes to show contraction, so like doesn't or possession, Willy Wonka's factory. And once you've completed that, I want you then to take a photo of your work and then upload it, it upload it with your all of the edits that you've done in your green pen okay if you don't have a green pen a green pencil or any other color so that we can see where you've edited your work i wish you guys all the best thank you so much for listening to me and i look forward to seeing you all very soon again bye